It's five o'clock on a Wednesday and it's time for Craig and Ryan's Magic Review Show. I'm Craig. I'm Ryan. Welcome back to another review show right here on Magic TV. Exactly. And we've got a bumper edition this week, five tricks on this week's show. We're only performing four of them. We'll get to that in a little bit. But there are five tricks on this week's show. Some good, some not so bad, but uh, we're looking at all of the latest and greatest tricks to hit the magic community. So without further ado, we're going to get straight into this week's review show with a brand new trick from Penguin Magic. Okay, so first up, we have um, Defaced by Martin uh, Brasus and P3, Penguin Magic. Yes. And this is basically Martin's version of the um, uh, sort of uh, mental photography deck, where the deck yeah. turns completely blank. Uh, I've seen a lot of people comparing this to the Snow Deck by Magic Dream. Very different to the Snow Deck. With the Snow Deck, uh, there was a deck that was blank from the very beginning, and they name a card, and that's the only card that becomes printed. Whilst with this, there's a whole bunch of plots in here. Yeah. It starts with them having to pick a card, it goes into an inversion type sequence, then a color changing deck type sequence, then it goes into uh, a sort of a blank stupidity type sequence. Before we talk about what we think about this, we're gonna do a performance, or I say we, he, he's gonna do a performance for you, so you can see exactly what this looks like, and then we'll talk about what we think. Yeah, okay, so here I've got a pack of cards. I see this. Yeah, you can see that I have a pack of cards. Yes, sir. Now, pack of cards. I see this. Yeah, all you're gonna do is you're just gonna say stop. Anywhere, stop. There, so yeah. that's the card you've got. Okay. Yeah, this card. Yeah. Take the card, look at it, don't forget it. Shall I show the camera? Yep, yeah, I'm not looking. That's the card, and got it. And done, just uh, put it into the middle of the deck wherever you want. Any way I want to. There, now there. I'm going to square up. Yep. Yeah. yeah? That's fair. No breaks or anything. That's very fair. Nothing. So I'm just going to turn this card over. Look. Now, do you know what the weird thing is? What's the weird thing? If I turn that card over, I snap. Would you believe that the rest of the pack completely That's cool. turns over except one card? It can't be. And you know that one card? It can't be. That card is. Look at it. That's my card, man. That's amazing. That is the Eight of Diamonds, yeah? Yep, that's really the good. The weird thing is, you see it's got blue back. Yeah. What? They're all red. They weren't red. They were black. They were blue. Well, look, look, look. All red. Look, what? it's not just that card. It's not just that card either. It is the whole entire deck. But you know what the weird thing is? What? If I snap again, no, it's blank. What? Look. And now once that card's blank, the rest of the deck is completely blank as well. That's incredible. Okay, right, that was a good performance. Let me ask you a question, because you're the one that learned this, you're the one that performed this. How difficult is it to do? Um, you yeah. learnt it, like, very quickly. It's not that hard. It's not re there's not really hardly any slides, is there? No. There's no double lifts or really anything. I mean, there's just a, a kind of a force at one point that's really, really easy to do. But other than that, that's it. Yeah. Um, Eric Tate does the tutorial for it. Martin um, uh, Breesus does a performance as well as Eric Tate, but Eric performs it he, uh, and explains it. Eric's one of the best tutorial people. He's one of the best uh, explainers of magic in the market. So th that's always good. And he, he made it across very, very clearly. He also goes through an alternate handling um, and the alternate handling uh, is is more suited for social media because uh, the angles are a little bit tighter. Yeah. Um, but in terms of the routine that Ryland did, yeah, I mean, you just saw the routine. There's a few, I don't want to know, I don't know if I can call them negatives or not. There's a few things that you need to be aware of. So first of all, the deck is very, very heavily set up at the beginning. So in other words, you can't spread the deck out or do anything. At the beginning, when Ryland takes the cards out of the box and has you pick a card, you can't show the faces of the deck, you can't show the backs of the deck, you can't do anything at that point. Um, so you can't be free with the deck at the very, very beginning at all. When the cards turn face up, you can obviously spread them out and show the face up, but you have to be very careful yeah. Um, and in that regard, it's a little bit like the snow deck. Um, and then the backs turn red. And then after the backs have turned red. The faces turn blank. The faces turn blank. And again, you need to be very careful with it. My big issue here is examinability. Now, yeah. I made the point on the snow, because there are similarities with this and the snow deck. Yeah, there are. And I made the point on the snow deck that the deck, I don't think, would want to be examined. And the reason I made that point is because the deck is blank from the beginning. 
And there's some very fair displays at the beginning when you're showing the deck blank. There's some very nice sequences that Johan has built into the snow deck to make it look completely blank. And so when that one card's printed, I don't feel like it needs to be examined. I don't think people would want to examine it. But with this, there's so much crazy stuff happening to this deck. They're turning over by magic. The backs of the cards are changing. The faces are becoming blank. And it's not like it was blank to begin with. When you didn't bring the deck out, it's snow deck, I have to compare it because a lot of people have. When you bring the snow deck out and you show that it's a blank deck of cards and they're blank on both sides, you can hand them cards and let them look at some of the cards and say, look, these cards are blank. These are what cards look like before they're printed. When you do this, the cards just become blank. And I don't know if you've ever worked with blank cards before. When you do anything with blank cards, a lot of lay people are kind of like, oh, let me look at that. They've never seen anything like it before. It's a bit like a jumbo coin in that regard. Um, you can't let them look at this deck. Like, they can't go anywhere near this deck. This deck is not even slightly examinable. Maybe if you do quantum deck before, then, then you, they know what a blank deck is. I mean, yeah, you could you could fix it with routining. And I know people are going to say, well, what about Imagine by Harry and Peter Nardi? Oh, yeah. That's not an examinable yeah. deck, and that yeah, one turns yeah. blank, which is true. But during the course of Imagine, they're seeing faces and backs of the cards all the time. They're sit you're doing that whole bit at the beginning where you're dribbling through and you're having them look at card and you tell them what the card is and you're having them look at another card and tell them what the card is. They're seeing fronts and backs of every single card. Yeah. So when the And when the cards turn blank, they're seeing fronts and backs of every single card. Yeah. The displays are really nice to show that the cards are blank. With this, that's not the case. Yeah. With this, you can't have... You can't say, you can't, without giving it away, I can't, you can't, which I don't want to do, you can't actually spread the deck out very, very fairly at all when the cards are blank. Yeah. Uh, you can show the backs very, very freely. Um, and I just think that this is the sort of thing that want, makes people want to examine it. Now, like you say, you could then go into a routine that requires a blank deck with a, with a red back and do a switch, like you said to me earlier. But in all honesty, I just think that there's... It's okay. It's not bad. Don't get me yeah, wrong. Yeah, it's not. I, 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 I do like it. It's not the worst yeah. trick in the world. You told me that you're definitely going to do this on your Instagram yeah. and your Facebook and yeah. stuff. It's a fun little trick. Don't get me wrong. I just think that there's a lot of ways of doing this same trick that end with the deck being kind of freer, if that kind of makes yeah. sense. There's not any dodgy moves in it at all. Um, the handling all makes complete sense. It's just that... Um, yeah, I'm a little bit underwhelmed. It's an okay, it's a good trick and it's an okay method. But I just think that um, in the real world, I think you might struggle. Now, I don't know. I, I, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, I don't think I'm going to do this. I'd stick with probably Imagine by, uh, or the Snow Deck or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I still think it's good. I, I, it's good. It's just, I, I think it's a bit too clever for its own good. I'm going to give it 70%. I'm not going to do it. It's not something I'm going to do. There's lots of positives. The tutorial's great. The card's well made. It's very well packaged. It's not difficult to do. It's very, very easy. It's not rough and smooth. Um, but I'm not going to do it. I prefer being, you know, doing something like Imagine where I've got a routine that I can do leading up to that blank kicker. Yeah. And, and, and also with Imagine, having the decks go blank on the faces and the backs. Yes. As opposed yeah, yeah. to just, just, just the just faces. Just the faces. I don't know. I mean, like, I don't think you would be able to switch it out the deck. I, I, the heat's going to be on it at that point, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It will be the wrong moment to do a switch. It would be. So what are you giving it? I'm going to say I'm going to give it 79%. 79%. You like it, but you're not going to do it. Yeah. Although you are doing it on social media. Yeah, you yeah. told me you're going to do it on your, your Insta. Yeah. yeah, I mean, for in, if you're a social media magician, by all means, get this, because this yeah. is... This is great for social media. Or if you're doing a parlour show and you want to... Maybe it's a parlour show. But, but yeah, 79% from him, 70% from me. It's all right. If you like what you saw Ryland do and you want to do it, you'll be able to do it very, very easily. Just be aware of the limitations. Okay, so we've got another one up by uh, Penguin now. This is like a Penguin special, this is. Um, this is Middle Seat by Elvo Stockman. And uh, it's another one that Eric Tate uh, does the tutorial on. And this is... A mind reading trick where you're very cleanly able to predict the seat 
number that somebody chooses on an airplane journey that they're going to take in their imagination. If it sounds crazy, it's because um, it's it's a very interesting plot, a very crazy plot. I'm going to do a performance on Ryland so you can see exactly what this looks like, and then we'll talk about what we think. Yeah. You like airplanes, don't you, Ryan? Yeah. I am going to send you on a magical journey. Okay. I don't know, I repeat, I don't know where you're going. Okay. But I do know how you're going to get there. Okay. Let me explain. I've got these cards here. Now, these are from uh, Penguin Pacific, right? Yeah. And basically, it's a seating plan of a plane. You can probably see that. It's uh, You put them all together and it shows the seating plan of a plane, right? You got it? Yeah. We'll get to those in a minute. Um, as well as that, I also have these cards. Now, all of these cards are in essence, uh, just tickets to different places. So you could go anywhere in the world. Like I said, I have no idea where you're going, little man. No idea at all. But what mm. I do know is I know how you're going to get there. And I'm going to prove to you categorically, without a shadow of a doubt, I knew how you would get there. Okay. So look, all these tickets, I don't know how many there are. There's a ton of them. Just touch one, anyone you want to. And if you want me to go back, you can. You'll see that each one's got a different seat number, different everything. You just decide. Mm. 12B. No, that, that one. I'm going to go for that. 16E. Yeah. Do you want to do it again? We could we could spread through and get a different one. It's totally up to you. Yeah, go on then. Oh, you want to do a different yeah. one? Okay, no problem. Uh, you just pick one that you like the look of. That one. 24E. 24E. Do you want to change your mind? No. You're happy with 24E? Yeah. Okay. And you could have had any one of these, couldn't you? Yeah. I'll put the rest over here. And do you remember I put this, uh, I put this plan from the very beginning... These cards that make up this sort of aeroplane plan have been here, right? Yeah. Here's what I don't understand. And, and I genuinely don't understand this. I told you that all of these are from Penguin Pacific. Do you remember? Yeah. Penguin Pacific. And I told you that the four of them make up like a um, aeroplane. Do you see that? Yeah. Let me just put this here like this. Because you see, they make up an aeroplane. And you see all the seat numbers. You notice I marked one seat, and the one seat that I marked is here, 24E. Mm -hmm. That's the one that's marked. And like I said, I knew where you, how you would get there. I didn't know where you were going, but I knew how you'd get there. Cool. So there you go. That's Middle Seat by Elbow Stockman. Um, let's talk about the pros first of all. Yeah. So um nice packaging uh the cards are well made they look like airplane tickets which is or airplane um seating chart it, it looks it's yeah. all very well designed which is nice and eric does a great job of explaining the trick and talking through the trick um i'm not a fan neither am i i'm not a fan neither is he i'll tell you why i'm not a fan and i i, 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 I haven't spoke yeah you go first because maybe listen I could tell how it works as soon as you showed it to me. Like the move near the end, where you, um, without giving it away, the move at the end, that just gives it all away. It's only fifty percent of the time you have to do that move. But yeah, I know, I know what you mean. Yeah, but when you do it. Yeah. Um, I don't think you. I think you're thinking like a magician there. I don't, I, don't, I yeah, think that. I think that looks, the mess. It looks kind of obvious. <laughs> to be honest, though. <laughs> Maybe just that's my terrible handling. You never know. No. Um. There's a few reasons I'm not too keen. The first reason is um, <sighs> I don't like the fact that the only thing that you're predicting is the seat number. Yeah, I, th I, think, I, I, I did... think that you should um, predict where you're from and where you're going to. Yeah, well, I, 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 well I, I learned this before you, didn't I? Yeah. And I went to the office, obviously, a few times last week. And I was performing it to the guys in the office. I performed it to Matt. I performed it to Reagan. performed it to Liz. Everybody. Performed it into the office. And every single one of them said the same thing. They were like, oh, I thought you were going to tell me all this information. Because there's a ton more information on these cards. Like uh, the time of departure, the date, um, where, where you're going to, where you're coming from. There's all this information. And all you were able to predict was the seat number. And they were like, oh, I thought you were going to, I thought it was going to be a longer routine and there was going to be more involved in it. Now, I don't know if that's because they've seen a lot of magic before, but I was thinking that going into it. Oh, there's all this information on these cards. And literally the only thing that you're predicting is the seat number. I think that's a big problem. And I think that if they maybe thought about this a little bit more, maybe they could have got more out of it. Um, but that's... That's the first problem with it. Uh, the second problem with it is, 
Although I say that they look good, they do look good. They do look nice. But they, but they obviously aren't, like... Real. They, they obviously aren't real. This is obviously a trick. Yeah. This looks like a deck of cards. No one's ever heard of Penguin. Nobody's ever heard of Penguin Pacific Airlines. And this looks like a pack of cards uh, with loads of... You wouldn't carry this around with you. It doesn't look like airline tickets at all. And then whoever has a seating chart like this that they carry around with them, it just looks like a trick. It just screams like a magic trick. And I, I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing. And, and yeah. you know, that's not yeah, a problem for some people. Good. Like, you, like, I'm just like going back to an old trick that we did. Um, do you know the box where you shock it and it's like a rattle box as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. still loads. Like, that... That looks like a magic trick and something you wouldn't carry, but that, that, yeah, but. Mm. I know what you're trying to say. I don't, I, I don't know how to explain it. I, I know what you're trying to say. Like, I, I do like it. I don't have a problem carrying magic tricks around with me. Yeah, but, but this is it, trying to look organic. Yeah. It's trying to not look like a magic trick, which kind of just makes it even worse, in my opinion. If yeah. you're going to be a magic trick, just be loud and proud about it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, it's like one of the strongest things that I see you do is Monkey by Jeff Price because yes. it just looks like a key on your on your keychain. Yeah, and that's you know? not a problem. Um, but this, like, it's like, and it's it's just an awful lot for one simple revelation. For yeah. one simple revelation, bearing in mind you're predicting a number and a letter, you could do this entire thing with just a business card and a thumb writer, a, th a boon writer or a, uh, you know, like super Sharpie or something like that. You could do this with just one simple boom writer. You know, you have a business card, you pretend to write something. Um, you know, I want to imagine a plane. Can you, you're holding it here. I want to imagine a plane. I want to imagine the seat number on the plane. Imagine it's from like one to 50. What seat number is it? 13. Okay. 13. And it goes A, B, C, D, E, F. What, what is it? B. Okay. And what's interesting is I wrote that. I mean, you could do that with just a business card and a boom writer. Um, you wouldn't need to carry an entire pack of cards around with you. You wouldn't need to carry this seating plan, which basically, in order to do the seating plan, which you have to use in order to do the revelation, it has to literally cover the whole of a table. So you can. So this is no longer. This is not a walk around trick because you couldn't give these cards to people and have them hold them next to each other because they're gimmicked. So now you have to have a table in order to do this on. I just think there's a lot of negatives for what is basically, in yeah, essence, a um, very, very simple prediction of a number and a letter. Yeah, um, I'm going to compare this. Uh, there was something that Maisie did. Yeah. Uh, it's her trick. Yeah. And it's like this, but she's got like these, like, actually looking like um, um, uh, aeroplane tickets. All right, yeah. And they actually look like it. And she does a trick. Uh, I think you saw it. And she's got like... Um, a prediction and she predicts i forgot what the things are but i know one of them was where she's going yeah uh which celebrity she's going with and then i forgot the other one yeah it sounds like a confabulation the one yeah. thing i was going to say about this is the only use for this as far as i'm concerned is if you were doing a confabulation like thing and you wanted three different methods to you know get the information off people and this would be hey let's decide what seat you're on but even then i don't know it, i'm just very underwhelmed by this which is unusual because normally i really like penguin stuff um but this is something that i just think it it's 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 just carrying around this for something that is you know you don't you don't need it you don't need it there's other ways to do this and um there's a, there's a lot of limitations to this uh, I'm not saying it's terrible. I'm just not saying it's great. It's definitely not something I'd do, which is why I'm going to give it 50%. Uh, even the great Eric Tate, as far as I'm concerned, couldn't uh, fix this with the tutorial. Yes, I, I was actually going to say 50 Yeah, 50%. Yes. Yeah. Look, you just saw the performance. If you like it and you want to predict a seat number, go for it. But I think, you know, ultimately, at the end of the day, if you go into a group of people and you've got 15 minutes to entertain them, there's a million different things that you can do that's way more impressive than this. 50%. Okay, so we're on to our third penguin trick now. It's like a penguin special. And this one is a download. We don't normally review downloads, but this is something that you've been playing around with for a while. Yeah. And uh, you wanted to review it because you think this is one of the best things that you've seen ever. It was when uh, we were going to London for the YMC. We were in the hotel and then it showed me this and I'm like, what? Yeah, and then we downloaded it and watched it immediately. And we're like, oh my God, this is amazing. And, and then it's... I got it. And yeah. then I got it. And I, and I, and I can do it. 
You can do it, yeah, and you're about to do it, yeah. It's yeah, it's it's killer. It's absolutely it is killer. It's insane. It's um yeah. it's it's flip and it fooled Penn and Teller. Yes, it is. And it won the Penguin Magic um download of the year. Yes. Uh, in 2022. That is true. And there's two versions of this. There's a stage version and there's a close-up version. Ryland's going to perform the close-up version for you because a lot of people have seen the stage version. So let's have a look at a close-up version of this trick, which I think is just as good. Yeah. And then we'll talk about the pros and cons. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to play the game of chance. Okay. Now, in the game of chance, there are six rounds, as you can see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. We've got a pen. I'll explain why we've got a pen in a minute. But what we're going to do is what we're going to do is I'm going to flip the coin up in the air. I'm going to catch it. Now, once I've caught it, you're going to say heads or tails. If you say heads and it is heads, give it a tick. If you say heads... And it's tails, give it a I get it. Cross. Yeah, okay. So if you're right, give it a tick. If you're wrong, give it a I'm cross. really good at this. Okay. Are you ready? Hey, can I have the thing? Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. Right, first round. Call it. Heads. 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 Boom. Correct. Getting a tick. Right, you ready? Yeah. Heads again. Heads again. Heads. Getting another tick. Right. Too good at this. Next round. I'm still... Heads. Heads again. Heads. You got that uh, one wrong. I went to the well one too many times. All right. right. Swishing this up. Yeah. Tails. Tails, sure. Yeah, positive. Tails, correct. Yes, back in the game. Now you got three ticks. I'm doing well. Cross. Three ticks, one cross. Yeah, yeah. Right, two more rounds left. Okay. Right, second to last round. Yeah, got it. Go with the heads again. Go with the heads again. Heads. Boom. Right, last round. Yeah. Final round. Okay. Tails. Tails, sure. Yeah. Tails. Yes. So hey, dude, you... I got all of them right except for number what, three. Except for number three. Yeah, except look at that. That's not bad, right? The thing is, I predicted that you would get number three wrong. No, you didn't. Yeah, you see on the back. Read that out to everyone. You will get them all correct except number three. I'll show you that. What? <laughs> That's awesome. So, um, that was that was a performance of the close-up trick. What Flip is, it's about half an hour, 40-minute tutorial. Uh, it's a download, and it teaches you how to do a controlled coin flip. Now, I remember the first time I saw somebody control uh, the outcome of a coin. It was on a Penguin Live, and it was by Kennedy, and he used it to make a prediction of uh, the final person in a heads and tails game. And since then, uh, John Allen has gone down that route. This is the same route that this guy's gone down um, with Flip. Uh, it's um, a really interesting premise for a stage routine, but this is something that you can do close up as well, isn't it? Yeah. So in other words, you're going to learn how to do a controlled flip of a coin. So uh, we like to use a... I'll look at you with your coin skills. Uh, two pound coin. Two pound coin. Um, um, he, uh, the person who actually created Flip, he says he uses a half dollar. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll say it's easy to do it with a two pound coin, hands or tails. Tails. Tails, yeah. Um, like once you've got it once, you can pretty much get it every time. Heads. Wow. Yeah, you can pretty much get it every time once you've, um, look, we'll do it one more time, pretty much every time. Prove it. Prove Heads. It. Heads. Yeah. Pretty much every time. <laughs> is it difficult to do? No. No. It's easy. Well, when it's, no, 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 I can't say how it works, but it is pretty it's it, easy. It is pretty easy. Yeah. Um, hey, wow. Once, you, once you've got it once, you can get it every time. So that, that so that routine that you did, I mean, that's perfect for close up. You just write a file card out from the beginning, and you just play this game. Yeah, that's a killer trick. Yeah, it is. But you can also do it to an entire room full of people. Yeah. So the way that he does it in his stage performance is he gets everyone standing up, and he's able to predict. Yeah, like and so you write a prediction just before the start. You look into the audience and go, the person with pink glasses on, a purple jumper, and blue trousers in the shiny black shoes will win the heads or tails game yeah and then, and then all you have to do is just control it throughout like let's say well you pretend to be the guy having their hands hand up hand down yeah okay so just like that and then you can get them to win heads 
yeah, heads. Any, anyone that had their hand on the head still in the round. You, you just do that over and over again until the urn she wins. And as I say, Ken Dine as the Kennedy has done stuff like this. John Allen has done stuff like this. But this is great. It just uses a coin. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, you know, I mean, any time that you want to um, manipulate the results of a 50-50 call, you can do so with this technique. Um, and Ryan, as Ryan said, you can borrow a coin. You can do it anytime, yeah. anywhere. It's the sort of thing that you can yeah, do. Yeah, all you need to do when you borrow the coin is you just give it a quick trick. Mm -hmm. You just like, well, you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just if it if let's say let's say you give me a fifty pence. I like to use five pound, uh, two pounds. But if they haven't got two pounds, they just give me a coin. I just just check it quickly. Then mm -hmm. I might write it. Okay, heads or tails. 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 Yeah. You, lo you love this trick. <laughs> you yeah. walking around doing it all the time. You better not be using this at school for nefarious purposes. I tell you what, I get to have the chocolate bar at your lunch if I get this right. <laughs> if you don't get this right three times in a row. <laughs> you know, I'll get, if you get it right, I'll give you all of my lunch if you get it right once. But if you get it wrong three times in a row, you've got to give me my cho your chocolate bar. Heads or tails? Heads or... Oh, give it a, although your friends probably don't trust you at school, do they? They know you're a magician. Um, I, I think this is such a great technique. I mean, literally, just with a coin in your pocket. Uh, really creative stuff. People are going to come up with some amazing ideas for this. Your, the the, the close-up routine that Ryland just showed you, you're planning on doing that all the time, aren't yeah. you? Um, are you going to put the big thing in the in the stage show? In your stage show? The, uh, you're going to do heads and tails in the stage show? Yeah. Yeah, you are. Yeah, um, just look, Jim, just look it'd be really audience. fun, wouldn't just, it? Just, just before we start the stage show, uh, just check if everyone's going to stay. And if they're not, yeah, you just check. Is everyone going to stay throughout the show? And then, and you choose someone. You make the prediction. Yeah, yeah you, you choose someone. Uh, you just choose someone without telling them. You just look at someone, see what they're wearing, mm -hmm. go backstage, write it down, and you say, okay, you're ready to start the show. And you ask, I would say you open with this. Yeah, this will make you great opener. Yeah, great opener. Great opener. I'm giving this 100%. What about you? Mm, yeah. 100%? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 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 Sick. <laughs> I just want to do it one more time. Heads or tails. Hang on. Heads or tails. Call it while it's in the air this time. Okay. Are you ready? Heads. Heads. Boom. I just love this. 100% <laughs> from Ryman. 100% from me. Yeah. Let's move on with the next trick. So next up, we have the Thread of Life. Wayne Dobson and uh, Alan Wong present the Thread of Life, which is basically Wayne's handling of the gypsy thread. Now, is the gypsy thread the one where they talk about um, when they're little boys and they saw all this? No, you know... Um, it's this. This is the gypsy thread. Oh. Tearing it up. That's what the gypsy thread is. So, like, uh, the Thread of Life is Wayne's in... version of the gypsy thread. Um, I forgot who it was. If someone, know. someone did it at the London Magic Convention, twenty twenty one. I don't know. I, uh, I think it was Andy Nyman. Okay, don't know. I, I think it was Andy Nyman. No, not Andy Nyman. No idea. It was Andy Nyman. You think about it. I'll talk to them. So the thread of life is Wayne's version of the gypsy thread. You get, uh, you get some really nice props actually. What you get is. Let me talk this. Who's the guy that uses that torch as in like a little lens? No idea. You know the one where he's got a torch on his arm, he's like that? Yeah, I don't know, dude. You know really? what I'm talking about, though? No. So, mm. you're so annoying. Mm. So you get this little old-fashioned book-style thing, and you get tons of thread and things in there. And uh, you get Wayne's full script. Now, we're not going to go through Wayne's full script, because that's part of what you're uh, paying for. But Wayne is one of your favourite magicians, yeah. isn't he? Yeah. If not your favourite magician. And anything that Wayne does, Ryland wants to be doing. And this is no exception. And you've been wanting to learn the gypsy thread for a while. And when this came in, he was like, OK, I'm learning the gypsy thread. I'm putting it into my show. I'm doing it. But you want to you wanna do it to music, don't you? Yeah. So on the tutorial, Axel Hecklau um, teaches you how to do the gypsy thread. And he does it really well. I mean, Axel's an amazing guy anyway. Uh, but he does the gypsy thread routine beautifully. He explains it. Uh, it's something that's going to take a bit of practice in order to get right. But it's the sort of thing that you can do in a close-up situation. It's something that you can do on stage. It's very visual. Uh, you, like I say, Ryland's just immediately fallen in love with it. And we've been listening to music that you can do it to. Um, he's still in the process of learning it. But we're going to give it a shot, aren't we, Ryan? Yeah. So you're going to have a look at a performance of this. This yeah. is a performance of... Uh, 
um, the thread of life or, or the gypsy thread as taught on the thread of life, but without the script that Wayne put together. Who I think did this? Who? Nigel Quinn. Nigel Quinn. Oh well, yeah, I oh, remember well, him in the competition. You remember? You remember? Um, he he took. He was talking about childhood, and he wanted to go up to a magician, and he every piece of thread was a magician that he liked. He took all the thread, rolled it up into a ball, and he said, "But w one day they will all come together." And nice. I think it was something like that. Well, but it was Andy uh, Nigel Quinn. There you go. I'm glad you remembered because that was destroying you wasn't it yeah. um so there you go i mean you get a ton of thread in here enough to last a very long time you get all the bits and pieces everything that you need is inside here the book of life i mean the props are beautiful like i said you get wayne's script um the gypsy thread is something that can be done close up you can do it on stage you can do it in kid shows you can do it silently you can do it to patty you can do it to music it's a very versatile piece and it takes up virtually no space it's just a it's just a spool um, of thread that you unravel. It will take work. Ryan is practicing it all the time at the moment, but uh, the more you practice it, yeah, the more you practice it, the better you'll get at it. Um, this is a beautiful set. It's a really yeah. good price for everything that you've got, um, including, as I said, the script, the PDF, the tutorial by Axel Hecklo, all the thread, the book, the whole thing is beautiful. Um, I'm going to give it 79% purely because I don't plan on doing the gypsy thread. Never have. Um, it's just not something that I've ever wanted to do. But you, I know you want to put this in your show. And I know you love Wayne Dobson. So I'm giving it 79%. What are you giving it? Uh, 100%. 100%. Your plan is to get this on the next show you're doing, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. 100% yeah. from uh, Ryland. 79% from me. If you want to learn the gypsy thread, this is probably the best way that you can go to learn the gypsy threads you've got tons of threads you've got everything you need this is a great kit okay so the final review today is not unexpected by jim steinmeier and vortex magic uh, and as it says here jim steinmeier's uh, not unexpected was designed for doug hanging to use in the world of magic show on broadway and subsequent shows included television appearances uh, regarded as the best and most practical and startling version of the sliding knot trick this precision-made knife holds the secret to an incredible illusion and can be performed under all working conditions. Uh, includes a knife and online tutorial. Um, we're not performing this, and the reason we're not we performing not. this is because 
this is really designed to be a stage show. It's it's a yes. version of yeah. the uh, of the walking knot um, or the sliding yeah. knot. Now I've done for years a version of the walking knot, and I've used Pavel's walking knot. And if you don't know what it is, the idea is you've got a long piece of rope held either on two mic stands or by two people. You cut the rope in a particular point, and then you move the knot to somewhere else. And, and oh, then move I've it back to somewhere with, um, else. There move... was someone in an illusion show. Yes, you? Danny Hunt does it an awful lot in Amethyst. You saw Amethyst um, several times. You've seen Amethyst now. Uh, so Danny Hunt is one of Danny's regular tricks, and he uses the Pavel um, version just like I do. And then Michael J. Fitch came up with a version that uses just a regular piece of rope, and that's genius if you're looking for a good version of that. Um, I've got to be honest with you. So, it, But you need a stage. You need a stage. This is a version of it. I'm not a big fan. I am not a big fan at all. And I don't know if I'm not a big fan uh, because I prefer the other versions um, or what. But uh, first of all, I think that the knife looks very, very dodgy. You know, if you're scared of the knife, I'm not going to stab you with it or anything. Um, the knife, I think, looks very, very dodgy. Um, I just think it doesn't look good. the knife looks like nothing that you would ever see. And that's part uh, of... It's a real knife. It's, this part into, is a real knife. You jabbed it into the table over there. I did. This is a real knife. Uh, however, um, the handle... Just looks terrible. Well, it looks terrible, but that's part of the method. Uh, so what happens is you have two people holding the rope. Um, and you're going to come in and you're going to take the knife and you're going to cut the rope at that particular point. Um, but you're not, without giving too much away, you're not. But the handling is truly, is, I don't want to diss Steinmeier. I mean, at, at the bottom line is the guy's a genius, he's a legend. He'll know more about, he's more about magic than I'll ever know. But, but you know, I kind of have to be honest on this. I don't, I don't think this is a great method to do the trick. I think it's kind of impractical. I think that the guy on the tutorial from Vortex um, that was explaining it made it look even worse maybe it's because the tutorial was so bad but the tutorial made it look really really cozy I think that the whole point of doing any sort of sliding knot is that when you get to the point that you're going to cut the rope it should be very free it should be boom I'm going to cut the rope that's what happens in uh, Pavel's version in Michael J Fitch's version it looks very fair with this, it doesn't. It's very cosy. There's a lot of dirty work that you need to do. And I think the dirty work takes place at exactly the wrong time. Um, and and I, I just think that it, it's it's just not great, really, to be honest. Um, there's no live performance. You'd think there would be a live performance. There's a studio performance, which doesn't make sense because they're sitting behind a table. It's difficult to do a studio performance. And I just think that... that, that Maybe back in the day when this was created for Doug Henning, this was a valid technique. But these days, I don't think it is so much. I don't think, I think that lay people will realise that there's something up with this knife the second that you walk out with it. I just think it doesn't look like a real normal knife. <laughs> I don't think it looks like a real normal knife. I think that, and it's very sharp, you really could hurt yourself. <laughs> stab you it's really it's really, you do realize next week i'm going to teach you a knife throwing act so you better be careful um i, I just think I, I mean what do you think right um it's not it looks terrible it doesn't look like a real knife it doesn't look like a the, real the knife the handle's too thick the handle's too thick and also the handling when you're cutting the rope just looks dodgy it looks like it looks obvious as to what you're doing which is part of the problem with it yeah. i just and and it wouldn't be a problem um you know if the but there's much better ways of achieving the same thing much better ways of achieving the same thing um you know we've reviewed this because we were asked to review it what's our opinion this is just not a great trick it's not a great way of doing this classic of magic heck i'd rather do fiber optics on stage than do this I think you get more mileage out of or doing fiber optics. Or awakening. Or awakening. Yeah, I mean, a different thing because it's a, it's a, you know, version of Professor's Nightmare, but still. Yeah, yeah I, I just... Very cool. Yeah, it's very cool. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to do it. He's not going to do it. Uh, and we perform on stage all the time and neither one of us tricks. is going to do it. Um, I'm, I'm just going to give this 40%. I think it's not a very good solution. And I don't think anybody who will buy this will ultimately end up doing it. And, and you know, obviously, it's designed for stage. 
Um, it's not really something that you can do close up. It's not something you can do parlor. It's not something you'd really want to do kids shows either. Um, although the walking knot will work in kids shows. I think this version, bringing a knife out like this is not a good idea in a kids show. Hey kids, here's Johnny. You know, I just, I, I don't know. Um, I'm going to give it, uh, like I say, 40%. What about you? Uh, 20. 20%. 20% from mine and 40% from me. It's not very good, but um, that's what it is. If you want it, you know where to get it from. That's another review show in the bed. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> you hurt your finger. <laughs> you, still got two, you still got two more to do. Go on. It's another review show in the back. That's another review show in the back. It is another review show in the back. Thank you once again for joining us right here on... Magic TV. We'll see you again next week right here on Magic TV with another review show. If there's something you want to see us review, let us know in the comments down below. Don't forget to follow this young man on Instagram who is now at just under 16,000 followers and on Facebook where you're absolutely killing it. YouTube, you're killing it. Don't forget to follow Magic TV if you're interested and uh, this channel and so on and so forth. And finally, if you want to go ahead and join the Netflix, go to www.thenetrix.cookies. I thought you were going to actually say com that time. Yes, okay, thenetrix.com or cookies. I don't know where cookies will take you. We'll be back again next week. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Craig. I'm Ryan. We'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.